the Pittsburgh Steelers had as bad of a bye week as you could possibly have as they left first place in the AFC North. All three division teams won, and now they come back tied with the Cleveland Browns, a half game above the Cincinnati Bengals, and one game back from the Baltimore Ravens. But that's okay because this is a huge, huge week for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they get one, maybe two, maybe three major boosts. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash all Steelers talk and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. The Pittsburgh Steelers return from the bye week. They are no longer atop the AFC North, but that's okay because it's a long season ahead. They're on a very good pace right now. And even if there are troubles and worries, and there definitely are some serious concerns. I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they go L.A., they go Jacksonville, Tennessee, Green Bay, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Arizona, New England, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Seattle, Baltimore finish the season. And let me tell you, I mean, if you had to make a bold prediction, the easiest one to make is that they're about to go on a run, that they can make a spark, and that they could defeat a lot, if not all of those teams outside of one, maybe two tough matchups. But the road is very nice, very clear. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, even if they're not in first place in the division right now, they still control their fate very much so. On top of that, this week is huge for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And yeah, it's big to come back from the bye week and say, hey, you got to win a game. But it's it's bigger than that. It's about players. It's about the roster. It's about this team finding more talent, getting more talent back and using it to go on said run. This week, Deontay Johnson says he will return to practice when they hit the field today. That is as big as it gets for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They need their top wide receiver back. Not only did George Pickens turn into an absolute star during this break, but what makes a star better? Having a second star with him. With Deontay Johnson on the field, Kenny Pickett constantly has a security blanket. You want to know who's going to be open? Deontay Johnson because he's the most open wide receiver in football, hands down. It's statistically proven. You can't argue it. Deontay Johnson is always open, and that's as good as it gets for a quarterback who's trying to get out of a slump. George Pickens, you can't double him if you're going to double Deontay Johnson. If you're going to double George Pickens, well, Deontay Johnson's going to be open, or Calvin Austin's going to be open, or Allen Robinson's going to be open, or the next guy that's coming back, possibly, Pat Fryermuth, who there are lingering reports out there that is it is expected that he will try to return this week before the team heads to L.A. against the Rams. That is humongous because now Kenny Pickett gets a fully loaded offense back. It allows him to feel as comfortable as humanly possible back there. And that's what this is about. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a lot going for them right now. The defense is great. Even if the secondary has issues, even if the inside linebackers aren't consistent, even if the run game is still struggling, the defense as a whole can go and win new games. But you need an offense, and it is clear as day where the struggles on that offense come from. Their play caller and their quarterback. And if they're not going to change their play caller, if they're not going to fix that aspect, well, Kenny Pickett, it is now on your shoulders. What can you do with it? To get Deontay Johnson back is as big as it gets. To get your tight end back, I mean, you could ask any quarterback in football. The favorite position to have on that field is a tight end. He is the ultimate safety blanket. He is the ultimate middle-of-the-field weapon. He is the guy that in those crucial moments, in those tough spots, in those times where no one else is open, you want to know who you're looking for? You're looking for your tight end. Getting Pat Fryermuth back is ginormous for Kenny Pickett. It allows him to build that chemistry and to have a fully loaded receiving core right now, to have all the options that the Pittsburgh Steelers have while still developing Darnell Washington, while still developing Calvin Austin, while still allowing Najee Harris and Jalen Warren to work the majority of the offensive workload and be a running football team. I mean, if you're going to bank on that run, if you're going to bold predict that run, That's why, because they have their weapons back and they could utilize those weapons for the first time since week one. 
The Pittsburgh Steelers are three and two, and they haven't had their stars on the field. They've been missing two of maybe their top three or four offensive weapons all season long almost. And now they come back week seven against the Rams, gets as big as it gets, and then they get another boost. And that other boost is possibly the return of Anthony McFarland, who feels good, is is targeting a return this week. And while he doesn't do much on offense, even though he did catch two passes in his lone game this season, what he does is he returns kicks. And the Pittsburgh Steelers have not been able to find a kick returner since this guy left. They have struggled mightily. Fans at this point, anytime they see Gunnar Olszewski back to catch a punt or a kick, they panic. They expect the worst. It's understandable. Desmond King, as much as maybe he's done it in the past and the success that he has had, didn't find any in Pittsburgh. And Calvin Austin, hopefully the return of Deontay Johnson allows the Steelers to ease up and feel more comfortable giving him a larger workload on special teams and allows him to be the punt returner. But with him as a punt returner and Anthony McFarlane as a kick returner, I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers, that's as good as it gets right there. Anthony McFarlane was your MVP in week one. He was the only player who did any good against the San Francisco 49ers. If the knee injury didn't pop up, I would have expected that to continue. And by now, I would have, to some degree, believe that he would have taken one to the house. If he is fully healthy, that's the expectation moving forward, is that at some point this season, Anthony McFarlane's in the end zone on a kick return. That's massive. To have Calvin Austin and Anthony McFarlane and those talented return men, I mean, that's a complete game changer. That's something most teams don't have. That's something that very, very successful teams, they do have and they utilize. And having Anthony McFarlane back is just another weapon to a group that is fighting for first place in the AFC North. Again, the bye week didn't go as planned. They would have hoped for some losses. Instead, they watched some wins. But they're well-rested. They're healthier, and this is the first time since week one that the Pittsburgh Steelers could have almost a completely healthy team, at least on offense, moving forward. That is as good of a launching pad as it gets. I've talked about launching pads before. I'll talk about them again. It's all about springboarding your way to the next win. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're in a good spot. They're still a fighter. They're still competitive. They still got every opportunity to make the most out of this season. And right now, they get three weapons back that only make everything better.